What do you think of when someone says God is judging America? Is God judging America? That really is the question. Can you answer no to that question? Can you, can you look at everything that's going on here in America, around the world, and say this? No, God's not judging. Then how do you explain all of the different things that are taking place around the world? And then how do you explain a sovereign God who is totally in control of his creation? Friends, without a doubt, God is exercising his righteousness, his holiness, his justice, and he is pouring out his judgment in a manner, in a way, in a manifestation that oftentimes we're not used to because we're thinking pie in the sky judgment. We're thinking stars falling, earth opening up, swallowing whole cities. That's coming. That's in the book of Revelation. But is God judging here and now? Let's go to the Bible. Let's go to Romans 1 and see what God is actually doing, and it will explain everything that you're witnessing. It says this in chapter 1, verse 18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and all unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. God is judging, and it uses the terminology unveiling, revealing his judgments against ungodly living and unrighteous living. What John MacArthur says about this text, the wrath of God, this is not an impulsive outburst of anger aimed capriciously at people whom God does not like. It is the settled, determined response of a righteous God against sin. More accurately, it's being revealed. You know what that means? You're watching the news, you're reading the newspaper, you're looking at your phone, and you're hearing about something that you've never heard about. You're like, well, Matt, how do you tie that into God's judgment? Because God has taken a step back from them. See, if we were to keep on going, what we're going to find out is the truest judgment and the worst judgment of all judgments. It goes on. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Because of all because that you and I have been given the blessings, the privileges, living here in America. Oh my gosh, it's a wonderful place, or at least it used to be. But a lot of people don't say thank you for their lot in life. A lot of people don't say anything at all, but give me more. I don't have enough. I'm going to take what you have. And what you have is a recipe for disaster when God blesses and men say more and spit in the face of God. See, that's what's taking place. They were not grateful for their own life, for the things that God bestowed on them. The Bible says a man can receive nothing, nothing at all, unless it's been given to him from heaven. And this is God giving things to people who don't deserve what they're getting. And instead of saying, thank you, I don't deserve this. I'm going to change. <laughs> they spit in God's face. God says you're without excuse. They knew there was a God. I mean, you're on the middle of a planet in the middle of a universe. Are, are you kidding me? We have four seasons. If we were closer to the sun, we would burn up. If we were further away, we would freeze to death. There's food. There's pleasure. There's water. There's all these things. And we're going to ignore all that? We're going to ignore every bit of that and just think it just came about. Friends, I wish that would just take place in my life. We're just, I come out into the living room and there's just gold bars there. I mean, that would be literally, okay, more conceivable than you living on a planet thinking, hey, it just happened. Friends, no, God is. Watch the progression here. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Walking around with signs, ignoring God, ignoring his law, ignoring his principles, 
going against the order of creation. I don't like the way I was made. I'm going to change it up. I don't like what God gave me in the opposite sex. I, I think I'll go to the same sex. I, I know God says no, but that really doesn't mean anything, does it? It absolutely does. Because the wrath of God is going to rest upon you, my friend. They changed the glory of uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible beasts to birds and four-footed things and creeping things. Wherefore, watch this. Wherefore, what does that mean? It means go back. If we go back, what are we going to find out? We're going to find a nation. We're going to find a people. We're going to find a world that is not grateful for what God gave them as far as life and not grateful for what God gave as far as redemption, Jesus Christ. Wherefore, God gave them up to the uncleanness of their lust to dishonor themselves, their bodies between themselves. What does that mean, God gave them up? Because we find that same phrase in 24 and 26, and then we find something even more frightening in verse 28, where God says, I gave them over. What that means is God is giving them up to a reprobate mind. I, mean, I don't understand. What does that mean? It means this, that God takes every ounce of ability that a person has to acknowledge God, the thought of God, the presence of God. You know what I'm saying? He just basically takes the knowledge of God out of them. And so they no longer can respond to God on any level. God has washed his hands of these individuals. Do you understand what a reprobate mind is? They do not even have the capacity to get on their knees and repent. They don't have the capacity to reason. I'm on a planet. Someone had to make this planet. Someone had to make matter. Someone had to make me. Uh, no, no, and no. They walk around boasting in their pride and in ignorance, taunting the living God up until the day, day that they implode. That's what takes place. They implode because we all need God. And when God has taken that out of you, what do you think takes place? See, these people are going to, because now they're unsettled. Oh, they were unsettled before not having a relationship with Jesus Christ. And they were acting out, but there was a point in time that I can't tell you when that is with any individual. That's not my job. But in God's long-suffering and patience, there's a point in time where God washes his hands of that individual. And that individual now is on their own. But if I'm on my own, guess what? I have a huge hole inside me. And I'm going to try to fill it. I don't understand. Why do I feel the way I feel? There isn't enough alcohol, enough marijuana, enough sex, enough cutting of the body and changing parts and enough aligning myself up with Satan and this agenda and this cause, okay, to bring any type of satisfaction into my life. God's gone and he ain't coming back. He's given them over. And what's going to take place? They will choose to live a life based on their intellect, what they think will satisfy them. And these are the most dangerous people in the world. They are dangerous because they are not operating out of the peace that surpasses all understanding. They are operating out of flesh. In each and every one of us, we have seeds of destruction. The Bible talks about in Romans 3, our depravity, the darkness within our hearts, what we're capable of doing if God was not restraining us. And here, God isn't restraining these people. He's given them up. You're the God of your own life. Boom. This is God's judgment. Upon who? Upon everyone that comes across that individual. It's almost like that person has a leprosy. And if you get in within five feet of them, you're going to start to see your skin decay and your flesh rot off of you. Because none of us are an island unto ourselves. Why would God allow this? What you're talking about, Matt? Because our nation has ignored this book. They have ignored God. What is written in the DNA in every person. He, they've ignored it. Forsaken God on the highest levels of this country. 
You can't pray in school. It's okay to have that baby ripped out of your womb. It's okay to have gay sex. It's okay to mutilate your children's bodies and make them into something that they want to be. What do you want to be? Because the suicide rate of the trans generation is 78%. And don't think for a second that our government doesn't understand that and know it. It wants to eliminate it because they operate in all the satanic handbook that Satan has pinned himself. For this cause, God gave them up. This is the second time. Undo vile affections, for even their women did exchange the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burning in their lust one towards another. Men with men working that which is unseemingly and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error. We're going to get our needs satisfied. God's walked away. God walks away from an individual. It's just a matter of time before they implode because they're trying to fill the void in their life and they don't understand why do I feel the way I feel and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge remember before they had the option okay before this happened they had the option to acknowledge God because it's written all over them everywhere you look there's God but listen to this, and even though they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Meaning, I'm going to try to figure it out in and of my own strength. But I don't have any wisdom from God. I don't have any leading of the Holy Spirit. My sins are not forgiven, so I'm heaping judgment against myself I would say that they are storing wrath against the day of wrath. God continues to allow these individuals to get worse and to get worse and to get worse and worse. The Bible says there grew a generation who knew not God, but guess what? There grew another generation because that generation had kids and they weren't teaching them about God. They were teaching them what they thought. And friends, it doesn't matter what you think or I think. This is the manual. This is the handbook. The Bible. Is... Basic instructions before leaving earth. When these reprobates leave earth, they gasp as they open their eyes in hell fire. That's just the truth of it. There's been more people that have died on the operating table, both saved and lost. The saved open their eyes and they see things that are so beautiful like Paul did. Uh, Paul, for three and a half years, could not describe when he visited heaven. And yet he's the greatest missionary spokesperson that ever walked upon the face of the planet other than Jesus Christ. And, and you're telling me that the greatest preacher of all preachers, okay, can't tell me a little bit of something about how special it was? He had no words. That's how great it was. But that person who died and started going towards the gates of hell and they could smell the sulfur and they could feel the pain and they could feel the loss. They could feel the anxiety. They could see the fear. They could feel the fear and they were being enveloped. They were about to be swallowed down for eternity after the first trillion years. It's not even the first second of eternity for their lost souls because there are no do-overs. There are no second chances. Once you close your eyes in death in this life, the Bible says that God hides his power. Did you know that? It also says that God sometimes hides his judgment. But for you and I, it's being revealed day by day. Do you guys want a selfie of what these people look like? I have not even been back 30 minutes from running some errands, and I ran into some of these individual people. Matt, are you judging? Absolutely not. They need the same thing I need, the same thing you need. They need a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. The only the problem, problem is they have is scorned God to his face for so long that God has given them up. God has given them up. God gave them over to what they wanted. I just want to be left alone. I want to live my life on my terms. I don't want to hear about you. I don't want to have to look at a church. I don't want someone handing me a track. I don't want any of that. Friends, can I share this with you? 
That's ludicrous. The void that's in your heart, you could drink all the alcohol in the world, follow it down with a whole bottle of Xanax and Prozac, and you can do whatever you want. But that void, that lack of peace, nothing in this world can make you feel whole again other than Jesus Christ. What do these people look like? Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things and imaginations, disobedient to without parents, understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do they do them, but they have pleasure in doing them because God is nowhere up here. It's just them. God has abandoned them because they abandoned God. Just like this country, just like this world. And friends, I haven't even cracked the book of Ezekiel. I haven't even cracked the book of the Revelation where God opens up the seals, the bowls, the trumpets, the thunderings, where God starts magnifying his wrath on levels that men have never seen. Daniel in the last chapter says there are times coming to this world that no nation, no person, no individual, no tribe or tongue could even imagine how bad it's going to get. He's going to reveal that to those who are left behind. He's going to reveal that to those people who haven't imploded completely. But to the child of the living God, oh my gosh, you are light in the midst of darkness. A thousand will fall to your left side, 10,000 to your right hand, God says, they'll get nowhere near you. God says they will surely gather together against you, against you, a child of the living God. But because of God's love for you, they will fall and give up their lives. I don't deserve this. The Bible tells me I don't deserve it either. But Isaiah 54 says it's not because of your good behavior. It's because of how good God is and God has given you his son's righteousness. What you're seeing across this nation, at the universities, in our big towns, across the world, is God giving people up who wanted to be given up. It's not like they were saying, oh, please save me. Please forgive me. No, they continued to go to the trough. They continued to go to darkness. They continued to ignore God. They continued to embrace that which was not of God. And then they hold their signs up, promoting, supporting something they know nothing about. Just yesterday, I saw a sign of all these gay people, you know what I'm saying? The gays for Palestine. Why don't you read up what Palestine in the Islamic faith does to the gays? You're beheaded. Uh, what about the small children? They're sex slaves. Uh, what about a goat in the front seat of a car and a wife in the back and the wife gets a beating if the dinner isn't on the table at six o'clock? He takes a whip with glass shards and he whips his wife and when she's dead, he'll go and buy another. You're supporting the filthiness of Satan and Satan is going to come back and bite you because you are not aware of the serpent has snuck into your life because you don't have the blood covering of Jesus Christ. Is America experiencing God's judgment? Well, I have a question before that question and it was this. Who drank the fifth cup? Who drank the wrath of God? It was Jesus. The fifth cup was given to almighty God's son and he drank it down knowing that that represented his flesh being crucified between two thieves, two rapists, two murderers. 
He says, I don't judge them because they don't know what they're doing. I freely give my life down. He gave his life so we could have life, so you could be be cleansed, empowered, directed, counseled, blessed. But there are those, listen very carefully, that say this to Jesus and to the Father and to the Spirit. I don't want you. I don't want to be forgiven. I want to live the life that I want to live. Even though God the Father gave his own son, I don't want that. And so here's what the Father is going to do for you, my friend. And it's right here in Romans chapter 1. He's handing you the cup of his wrath. He's saying, okay, are you sure? Because I've done everything for you. I've created you. I've sustained you. I've given you a planet in the middle of the universe. I've made myself known to you. Are you sure about this? And somewhere in the mind of God, in his perfect knowledge, he knows when it's time's up. Game over. He hands them the fifth cup and in their ignorance and darkness, they grab that cup and just slam it down. He gave them up, he gave them up, he gave them over for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. Meaning, you know right from wrong. You know what God accepts and what he doesn't accept and you can't call good evil and evil good and say this is acceptable and that's not acceptable when it contradicts this book. Oh my friends, there's a reckoning coming up and if you don't have Christ in your heart, you're somewhere in his measuring line and there's going to be a day when he drops you off and you're swallowing the fifth cup and then what are you going to do? You're going to implode Close your eyes in death and open your eyes in hell fire. Well, man, I don't believe it. You don't have to believe it. It's true. God judging America? Do you believe God is taking a step back from America? Do you think God can turn a blind eye to all the abortions and all the laws that say you can marry your same sex, that you can mutilate your children's bodies, that the government has rule over your children? God is bringing it. And there's no denying it. It's being revealed every day that I open up my tablet, my phone, I read the paper. His judgment is being revealed. Come back to Christ today if you can. Get on your knees. You're you're a 30 second prayer from saying sorry. Look at, look at, look at, God's not against you. You're a 30 second prayer from saying, Lord, I'm sorry. I didn't understand. I I can see it now. You've shined your light. You've given me illumination. You've quickened me. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Take this hard heart out of me. Give me a heart of flesh. Breathe on me. Bless me. My my way hasn't worked. I've done everything. I've tried everything, Lord. I've done all the sins that I can think about and nothing satisfied. I always have to go back to the trough over and over and over again to have another scoop of fornication, another scoop of drugs, a movie I shouldn't be watching, uh, stealing something that doesn't belong to me, having a mindset that is bent on darkness, trying to sabotage everyone around me so I can build my kingdom. Your kingdom is going to crumble without Christ. Repent this very day. Jesus' arms are wide open. He's saying this, come home.